What do you say, uh, for instance, to those who maybe are opposed to the viewpoints of the white nationalists and white supremacists, but also uh, attempt to condemn uh, any attempts to shut them, uh, shut them down, or not allow them to speak? Or uh, and obviously, the American Civil Liberties Union fought for the right of the Charlottesville, uh, the white nationalists, to have their rally in Charlottesville. Right. Well. The, the, the question of how to combat fascism, I think, always needs to come back to discussions of the 1930s and 1940s. So, clearly, we can see that rational discourse and debate was insufficient. Clearly, we can see that the mechanisms of parli parliamentary government were insufficient. We need to be able to come up with a way to say, how can we make sure never again? By any means necessary, this can never happen again. And, and the people back there who witnessed these atrocities uh, committed themselves to that. So the question is, okay, if you don't think that it's appropriate to physically confront and to stand in front of neo-Nazis who are trying to organize for another genocide now, do you do it after someone has died, as they, as they just did? Do you do it after a dozen people have died? Do you do it once they're at the, at the footsteps of, of power? At what point, at what point do you say enough is enough and give up on the, on the liberal notion that what we need to do is essentially create some sort of a regime of rights that allow neo-Nazis and their victims to coexist, quote unquote, peacefully, and recognize that the neo-Nazis don't want that, and that also the anti-fascists are right in not looking at it through that liberal lens, but rather seeing fascism not as an opinion that needs to be responded to respectfully, but as an, an enemy to humanity that needs to be stopped by any means necessary.